we're going to be looking at the photoelectric effect, which provided evidence for the particle nature of electromagnetic radiation. And the photoelectric effect is when electromagnetic radiation falls on a metal surface, then the electrons at the surface are instantaneously emitted. And that's because rather than the electromagnetic radiation being a continuous source of energy, it's actually made up of packets of energy or quanta of energy, which are called photons. And photons can be defined as packets of electromagnetic energy. The energy of each photon is equal to HF where H is the Planck's constant and F is the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation. So here we have three photons, each of energy HF. And each photon gives its energy completely to an electron, which allows the electron to escape from the metal surface. And you can see in this diagram we have three photons instant on the metal surface and we have three electrons being emitted so it's a one-to-one -one interaction you have one photon emitting one electron what was observed that if the frequency was too small so the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation was less than this threshold frequency this f naught then no electrons were emitted and it didn't matter what the intensity of the radiation was so you could have very high intensity electromagnetic radiation but if the frequency was too low no electrons were emitted and this was because if the frequency was too low the photons would not have enough energy to release the electrons from the metal surface because the energy of a photon is directly proportional to its frequency. And the minimum energy needed to release an electron from a metal surface is called the work function. So if the photon energy was less than the work function, no electrons could be released from the surface. And the work function given by the symbol phi, is equal to HF0, so H is Planck's constant, and F0 is the threshold frequency. So it's the minimum frequency of electromagnetic radiation needed to release electrons from a metal surface. And so you need the photon energy HF to be greater than the work function in order to release the electrons from the metal surface. So F has to be greater than F0 in order to release electrons. Another observation of the photoelectric effect was that if the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation was increased, then the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons also increased. And that's because if the photon energy is greater than the work function, then any remaining energy, so the difference in this energy, is converted into the kinetic energy of the electron. And so the maximum kinetic energy of the electron will be the photon energy minus the work function. And this is known as the photoelectric effect equation and it deals with the conservation of energy because all the energy of the photon is converted to the electron some of the energy for it to be released from the metal surface and the remaining energy converted into kinetic energy so increasing the frequency increases the photon energy and if we have a given metal, then the work function is a constant, then that means 
more energy will be available to be converted into kinetic energy. So the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons will increase. And if we plot a graph of the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons against the frequency of the instant electromagnetic radiation, we get a straight line. And this is our threshold frequency, the minimum frequency of the electromagnetic radiation that will allow electrons to be emitted from the metal surface. So that occurs when Ke max is zero. So you can see then that the work function will equal H F naught. If we compare this equation with the general equation for a straight line, y equals mx plus c, we can see our y is representing our maximum kinetic energy of the electrons. Our x is representing the frequency. And so we can see then that the gradient will equal Planck's constant. And the y-intercept equals minus the work function. And so that's when the frequency equals zero, Ke max will equal minus the work function. Another observation was that all the electrons didn't have the same kinetic energy. The electrons had a range of kinetic energies. And this was because the electrons that were closer to the metal surface needed less energy to escape. So there was more energy available from the photons for kinetic energy. So they had a higher kinetic energy. So electrons deeper in the metal surface would need more energy in order to escape the metal and so they would have less kinetic energy. They also observed that for a given frequency of electromagnetic radiation then the number of electrons emitted per second was directly proportional to the radiation intensity and that's because intensity relates to the amount of energy arriving per second so intensity would then be proportional to the number of photons arriving per second. And because each photon emits one electron, then the intensity will be directly proportional to the number of electrons emitted per second. So if the radiation intensity doubled, we will have double the number of photons arriving per second. So we would have double the number of electrons emitted per second. This may be an easier way to understand this relationship. And if we look at a shopping bag whose volume represents the intensity of the radiation, and inside the shopping bag are oranges, and each orange represents photon. So you can see that if we increase the volume of the shopping bag, we're increasing the intensity. So we have more oranges inside the shopping bag. So there are more photons per second with the increased intensity. However, if you increase the intensity of the electromagnetic radiation, it has no effect on the maximum kinetic energy of the electron. And that's because intensity does not affect the photon energy. Intensity affects the number of photons arriving, but it does not affect how much energy is carried by each photon. And the energy of each photon is given by HF, so it's the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation that affects photon energy, not intensity. And that's why intensity has no effect on the maximum kinetic energy of the electron.
but if the intensity was kept the same but the frequency of the radiation was increased then the number of electrons emitted per second would decrease and that's because as frequency increases each photon will have more energy and for intensity to remain the same remember intensity relates to the amount of energy arriving per second then fewer photons have to arrive per second at the surface and if there are fewer photons arriving per second then there'll be fewer electrons emitted per second this may be an easy way to understand it so we have two shopping bags of the same volume and the volume of the shopping bag represents the intensity of the electromagnetic radiation and if one bag is filled with grapes and each grape represents a photon but a photon of low energy you can see you can get quite a lot of grapes inside this volume of shopping bag so you have a lot of photons per second however if the shopping bag was filled with oranges and the oranges represent photons of a higher energy than the photons represented by the grapes then you can see for the same volume of shopping bag so for the same intensity of electromagnetic radiation you will have fewer oranges inside the bag so there'll be fewer photons per second but in total the energy per second for both these bags will be the same solar cells rely on the photoelectric effect to change light energy into electrical energy where photons hit the solar cells and electrons are emitted and these electrons can be used to create electricity we can use a gold leaf electroscope to demonstrate the photoelectric effect so a zinc plate is mounted on the electroscope and it's given some negative charge some electrons and the gold leaf is repelled away from the metal plate we then shine ultraviolet light on the zinc plate and immediately the gold leaf falls back to its original position and that's because the zinc plate is emitting electrons from its surface so there's less repulsion between the gold leaf and the metal plate so it falls back So the ultraviolet light has photons whose energy is greater than the work function of the zinc plate and so electrons can be emitted. However, if visible light was shone on the zinc plate, no electrons would be emitted, so the gold leaf will remain in its initial position, and that's because the frequency of visible light is lower than that of ultraviolet light so the photons for visible light will have less energy and so its energy will be less than the work function for the zinc metal and so no electrons can be emitted a photocell can be used to also demonstrate the photoelectric effect where electromagnetic radiation Will be instant on a metal cathode so cathode is negatively charged electrons will be released and they'll be attracted to the positive anode so a current will flow through the circuit and the current will be proportional to the number of electrons arriving at the anode per second